Hi guys, so today I am coming to you with a video from me, just a little bit different um, and also a little bit serious. Um, it's about a topic that I've had some experience around and I think those of you who have family members or friends or colleagues that are dealing with chronic illness um, sometimes have a hard time knowing what to say and not to step on anyone's toes or just saying the wrong things. Um, and I just wanted to guide you a little bit through that because I've had some co uh, comments um, during the last few years that I think is um, can be really hurtful uh, and sometimes even feel really mean but in most cases there are probably I mean I've even I'm guilty of saying some of these things myself because I'm I was just ignorant of the condition or or whatever the the person was dealing with and you're trying to come up the up with you know advices or just saying comforting things and it ends up being just the exact opposite or um, or people would just say things out of ignorance so most of the the comments that I'm gonna go through today are comments that I've experienced myself or I've heard other people with chronic illness experience so I think we can just jump in and start with the first comment that you shouldn't say to someone with a chronic illness but you don't look sick well this is a very common one and I think this is coming from a really good place like they want to give you a compliment like saying telling someone that they look good or that they don't that they look healthy or well is really a, a positive good thing but when it's commented with a when it's a comment that that goes to someone with chronic illness it can be received as if the person who says it doesn't really believe that you're sick and I mean I can I can understand why someone would say that um, it's a nice thing to say really that someone looks well or that you don't look sick but um, And in a way, it tells you that you reach your goal, goal because you do whatever it takes to look or to don't look sick. Um, for me, I really spend time and energy to um, present myself in a in a nice way. Like I try to do my makeup, I um, try to dress okay, and um, I always try to put on a smile, be positive, um, and optimistic. And that doesn't mean that I'm really, really struggling inside because it's almost as if the days that I'm kind of struggling the most are the days that I really want to look the best. It's kind of a, like a mask in in a way, but also I do it for myself because I want to I want to try to make myself feel better. You know, it's it's probably just in your head. You know, like a mental thing. And these are the things that frustrates me the most because yes, it is in my head. It's in my entire body. I have inflammation chronically in my entire body. I have nerve cells that are dead in my head or in my spine. My whole nervous system is up and there's 
not much I can do about it other than taking this goddamn medicine for the rest of my life that is really just feeling like I'm poisoning myself and telling someone that it's really all in your head is so frustrating to hear for someone with chronic illness because at least for me all I try to do towards others but also towards myself I try to be optimistic I try to stay positive I try to you know um, do good things to myself I I eat well I do yoga I meditate um, I try to set goals telling me that it's in my imagination makes me so so mad maybe more people get understanding for illness and sickness these days and how um, challenging that can be for your life for your economy for your family for your mental health and your physical health and just everything anyways where was I yeah don't remember what I was saying <laughs> Okay, the next thing, next comment that you should not say to someone with chronic illness is, well, at least you're not in a wheelchair or anything. Yeah, that is great. I am so thankful that I'm not in a wheelchair or use a cane or, you know, anything like that. Uh, but that doesn't mean that I can't, that I can do everything I want in life. Um, this illness is restrict, restricting me from doing a lot of the things that I really want to do. For example, I used to be really social, I used to love being with friends, um, going out, and just get energy from other people and just travel and getting experiences um, and yes I think a lot of it has to do with growing older and just uh, becoming more mature but I think most of it has to do with the fact that being outside with people um, just even like three or four people at the same time is more than enough for me to get really drained. I just have a really t a hard time dealing with social life, being um, present, listening to what everyone's saying, and um, just my, I, I get brain fog so often that it's really hard to focus um, on, on other people and I, I just, I don't have the energy that I used to have and I know that if I do go out or I do participate in something of any, like, social kind, I get get super fatigued for um, hours, days, maybe a week after. It depends. Um, and therefore, it's really hard to have a normal life. I just have I just really have the energy to do what I really have to do and not a whole lot more. There's just so many things that I can't do anymore. I just can't. Also, the fact that I'm not in a wheelchair, it's just, I've learned that you should not compare yourself with others in a lot of ways. Um, Because you're not in their shoes and they're not in your shoes and it's just it's just different things you just can't <laughs> are you sure it's MS 
Are you sure? Could be something else, like a cold or something. Well, well, I've been dealing with this since I was 16, so yes, I'm sure. So many things that I felt was wrong with me and I just couldn't figure out what it was. Went to doctors, specialists. They would all just say that I was healthy, doing well, that yeah, nothing's wrong with me. So I would begin to think that it was all in my mind. So when I was diagnosed, if I finally, you know, it was like the puzzle, missing puzzle. Um, so yeah, I've been dealing with this for a long time and I know my body very well and I know my struggles. So yes, I'm sure. You know, you should try to work a little bit more maybe. Just try. If you don't try, you don't know. Also, very frustrating to hear because um, as a person with chronic illness, you usually push yourself way over the limit. Um, and also work-wise, family-wise, friends-wise, you try to just fill all the roles that you have in society as a normal human being and um, to be able to do that you push yourself a lot and when it comes to work when when it's sort of come to the place that you have a problem getting on your feet in the morning standing up breathing um, lifting your hand, using your fingers, you know that there's no reason for you to try more. It's such an ignorant thing to say that it just like blows my mind that someone can say that. I But the thing is that when you get these comments thrown at you, sometimes I get shocked because people are so ignorant and then sometimes I get so hurt that I just want to cry and I, I can't even say a word. And sometimes I get so mad that I want to cry or scream or yeah. So I just, I'm just silent. I don't say anything. And that makes me even more mad because ignorant people are, are just going to stay ignorant if they don't get some knowledge. But I come to the conclusion that it's not my place, it's not my responsibility to tell ignorant people um, or dumb people, because ignorant and dumb are two separate things. Um, <laughs> I try to make them understand chronic illness um, because if you're an adult and you still haven't understood mental illness or chronic illness or any kind of illness really and you don't even try to understand I don't think there's any hope left for you so it's not it's really not going to be my responsibility to teach them any any kind of knowledge within within those fields. I know this guy that has a friend that has a mother and this mother has a sister and she has MS and she's totally fine. Or I know this guy that has MS and he's on this diet and he's totally fine as well. Or he did this thing and he's cured now. And this is definitely something that I have been guilty of myself. You really try to um, be supportive and try to come up with good advice and tips on things that I can do to just fix the problem. But the thing is, chronic illness can't be fixed 
it can be, I can make things better by doing medicine or di different kind of treatments or workout, you know, um, certain kind of diet. There's a lot of theories out there um, that can definitely make things better. Don't get me wrong, but if I don't ask for your advice, I do not need it. I just don't. I really don't. I spend so much time trying to um, reading about MS. Um, I I um, follow different uh, neurologists, doctors, experts, specialists on different kind of subjects. Um, I look at um, stem cell transplantations. I look at all different kind of medicines that are out there, uh, different treatments. I look at, um, I have books after books about this. I have been through courses. I've been through stays with all, uh, with the whole MS team around me that's, that has taught me so much about my own chronic illness and um, I I read articles almost every day I read a new art article about MS or um, just new science on it and I really think it's very interesting and I do absorb everything I can get but I just um, I just need to f find the those kind of sources myself I just don't really want another person giving me advice that they think can cure me that's one side of it the other side is the people that are that has friends and neighbors or uncles and aunts that has MS and they're totally fine you don't know that have you asked this person confidentially hey Uncle Laura, are you really fine? Are you sure you're fine? Tell me. You look fine. You don't look sick. Are you sure it's not in your head? Maybe you ask those questions and she would respond to you, yeah, maybe it's in my head or yeah, I'm fine. Yeah, sure, I'm fine, I'm good. But is she really? Because I've had those questions asked me and I say that I'm fine because I just don't want to get into it and I'm not fine. Um, I just don't want to tell you about all my struggles, especially if I get pretty fast that you wouldn't understand anyway. So really, even though you have an uncle or a neighbor or whatever it might be, and you think they're fine, you don't know for sure. So, and it's not really helping another MS patient um, to know that someone else is fine because um, Chronic illness are usually very, and I mean very complicated. These are um, illnesses that so many doctors don't really get quite fully because you really have to be a specialist, a specialist to, or a neurologist for, in my case, to um, understand the whole spectrum of it. And even then, it can be really hard. And the next thing is, especially to those of you with fatigue, I'm sure if there's anyone um, listening that has fatigue, I think you would understand that when you say you have fatigue to someone and you get in respond, yeah, I know, I'm so tired myself. Being tired and having fatigue are two completely different things. Like, they're, they're not the same. <laughs> um, when you have fatigue, I'm not going to get into that whole thing, but I can do another video on that if you guys want me to. But um, when you're fatigued, you're not just tired or even exhausted in in a normal way, like a normal person, because everyone gets tired or exhausted um, regularly. But when you're fatigued, there's there's no really rhyme and reason 
for you to be fatigued. Well, sometimes it is, but a lot of times you don't have to do anything. You can wake up in the morning and be completely like as if you can't really um, move your body. Um, like you have a hard time getting up or, or standing or walking or or making your for me the worst thing from for my fatigue is my brain fog like I can't make myself uh, function mentally um, my brain won't yeah see this is a good example I'm trying to so doing this video for instance I know gonna make me exhausted but it's also gonna bring me a lot of happiness um, so you just have to prioritize really um, I think I was trying to say <laughs> that when I get really fatigued my brain won't function function in a way where I can make myself sound reasonable like I people it, it's hard for me to get out any words at all really I it's just I can't think straight or I can be in the middle of a sentence and I just would just stop because everything is it's it just turns blank in my head um, yeah I'm good I'm just gonna move on to the next comment uh, of what not to say to someone with chronic illness <sighs> you need to get out more you know start exercising well, <laughs> um, I would refer to some of my other answers earlier that I, I'll get out as much as I can get out. Like, I can't um, push myself to get out and socialize if I am really ill. There's no reason for me to to do that and sometimes you kind of have to push yourself uh, maybe it's like work related or um, there's like birthdays that you really need to go to or some holiday or something like that you know you just really have to get through it um, that that's some of the most draining things I can think of um, and it also makes you like don't want to do things that you normally would love to do like I love the holidays I love going out and meeting people really like that's in my personality but I've kind of lost some of that because of this stupid chronic illness um, it, it just makes me not want to go out because I can't function the way I want to. So, yeah. Or maybe I can push myself into functioning really well um, during the time I'm with people. And then the moment I'm alone, I sort of just crash because I've given my all. I think a lot of people with chronic illness are also really good actors yeah and the start exercising part is just um, I don't even know how to respond to that because um, I do exercise and I know people with chronic illness that doesn't exercise and I know that there's good reason for that it's not because they don't think it's a good idea <laughs> because um, for most people exercising is good it's a good thing to do it's the right thing to do for your body but when your body is in a lot of pain or you're very fatigued 
and just going to the bathroom or taking a shower is really hard to do. The last thing that's on your mind is exercising. Just believe me. Um, but for me, what works for me has been, you know, finding um, exercising methods that works for my body. Like normally, I love dancing. Dancing is my number one exercise. I've loved dancing since I could walk. And if there's one thing I wish I could do like every day, it's to dance. Um, nowadays, I dance maybe once a year, if I'm lucky. Um, and then I just give it my all <laughs> because I love it so much. But the way things are now, I know that there's no chance that my body would um, let me dance regularly, regularly, even though dancing is such great exercise for your body, for a normal human being. Um, but no, it just doesn't work for me the way things are now. So I try to focus on other things like um, strength, doing yoga, stretching, um, and meditation, I would also consider a way of exercising. And meditation is probably the best way to exercise for someone with fatigue. Um, like that's your first time, first step into the exercising world. And then maybe yoga or Pilates or um, but yeah, that, that's what's, what works for me. I know that there's going to be someone listening to this video and saying like, no, yoga does not work for me. Okay, I know that for a fact that that does not work for me. Or meditation doesn't work for me. There's no way I can focus on meditating right now. Um, so you kind of have to find... Um, Find what works for you and no one can come and tell you that oh you need to exercise believe me you just have to get up and get out or hit the gym and just do like one hour a day just one hour a day that's not much to ask for right well again <laughs> that's what ignorant people say so if you don't work at all times so like what do you do all day I'm in a place right now where I um, I'm kind of in the middle of working and not working um, and I've had people it, now and also previously asking me um, these kind of questions where it's like what do you do all day it has to be so boring just being at home all day and my answer to that is um, I don't first of all I'm not I'm not the person who gets bored very easily I never am bored I'm very much a creative person that needs to be creative and just I have a lot of ideas in my mind a lot of things I want to do so many dreams so many yeah just things I want to do but when it comes to my daily life with chronic illness um, my my daily chores or whatever you want to call it things I do during the day um, can be such a struggle for me um, and I can spend twice or three times the amount of time doing it than a normal person. Um, for me a day goes by like this. It goes very quickly and I need a lot of time to rest so yeah no I don't get bored and I don't have a problem um, figuring out things to do. So do you feel any better? Like, when do you think you'll get better? 
um, when you feel you're gonna get well again. So again, this is a comment that really comes from someone who's just wondering, I think. They're not being mean, they're not being... It, it's not coming from a bad place, um, but they're just curious. And it's also coming from someone who doesn't um, understand the meaning of chronic illness. When you're chronically ill, it means it will not go away. It is not um, able, I'm not able to cure this disease or this illness. Uh, it's not like having a cold that you get ill and then you get well again. It's just not how it works. There can be times where I feel better um, and that can vary from hours to minutes, days, weeks, months, years. It always goes like this and for me with my disease I never know when I feel better or when I feel worse. So um, when someone asks me, um, hey do you want to go out on Friday or um, like, um, we should go on this trip, um, in July. It's not like, and they say, like, do you think you'll get better by then? It's not like I know that I'm going to be, on this day, I'm going to feel well. I can do everything that it takes for me to gather up the energy to have a lot of rest beforehand, before something special is going to happen, but I truly never know how, what the next day brings or or how much fatigue or pain I'm going to be in. So it's really difficult to plan things, um, to plan work, social gatherings, trips, vacations, um, dinners, movies, parties, you know, things like social things or even ch chores. Like I would I would play in my week um, where I'd say like um, every Monday I want to change the beddings. That I can just uh, forget about that because I can't plan, it doesn't work like that. I can't plan things the way other people plan it and I can get up one morning and I can feel pretty good you know and I, I would think that oh this day is gonna be great um, and then maybe two hours goes by and I am miserable so and I would assume I don't know but I would assume assume that this would be the case for maybe people with mental illnesses as well or you know with other kinds of sicknesses but it's definitely this way for people with chronic illness that you just don't know and it's really hard to answer questions um, that involves some kind of planning but it doesn't mean that I don't want to be um, to get to get invitations for stuff. I think that is the best thing you can do when you know someone with chronic illness that you don't forget about them. I know that we get more boring um, having having a chronic illness makes you a lot more boring because you're not able to give as much as you want. Um, in interactions with people you're not able to socialize or participate in different activities the way normal people do but believe me we appreciate the fact that you reach out that you give us a call or that you just um, just text me and say that you're thinking of me you know that like anyone else that's something um, 
at least I appreciate a lot and that you get invitations hey do you want to like come over tonight even though the person with the chronic illness has told you no I'm sorry I don't feel well like 10 times in a row don't don't stop inviting them because um, because it means so much to know that people aren't forgetting you even though you're like isolated in your own little bubble let me know if you need anything so um, you're probably gonna wonder like how is that a bad thing to say that's not a bad thing to say is it um, well no it's not but it's just like a little like tip and it leads, leads me to the last part of this video is I'm, I just wanted to give you advices on what you could say instead of some of these things um, because when you have a chronic illness you usually like I said you push yourself you try to act normal you try to you know do what everyone everyone else is doing or what you think is expected from you or what you expect from yourself and maybe you're like a little proud like you just you don't want to maybe admit to yourself or others how um, sick you can really be at times and the last thing you want is help from anyone because if you get help it makes you weak and um, which is I mean that's so stupid to even think like that but that's I think that's a fact that's the way it is for me and when someone asks me hey let me help you with that or or if they say like hey just let me know if you need anything or if I can help you with anything that's um is so nice that is so nice and I really appreciate it I really really do um, like don't get me wrong on that but it would take me a lot like a lot to say yeah you know actually I need some help that's just um, unlikely to happen if you can if you see someone struggling and they really do need some help unless you're inviting uh, invading their private space just go ahead and help them don't ask because they're gonna say no just just do it <laughs> that's my advice um, and I'm curious to know what you other guys are thinking about that issue if you're watching and you have a chronic illness what is your take on it please comment down below because I mean I could be wrong maybe I'm the only um, person feeling this way and instead of asking or saying hey you don't look sick instead of saying that maybe you could say like um, hey I think you look really well but how are you really feeling like tell me um, because that makes me feel like you're actually um, understanding but do not say that if you're not ready to listen because if you ask someone how they really are especially if you ask a sick person how they really are or, or someone struggling you better be prepared to listen because um, when when someone with with chronic illness gets asked how they're actually feeling from someone they feel is understanding and is ready to listen they might actually open up and if the person who asked is sitting like uh-huh yeah mm -hmm. so I'm gonna go 
and you feel like you just, oops, like, oh, I should have said those things. Didn't she just ask how I was feeling? Shouldn't I? I mean, wasn't I? Yeah, okay, maybe not. Maybe I should never say anything to anyone ever again. Um, that makes you kind of like, ooh, like burn your, you get burned a little bit because, um, because you feel like the person just can't handle the truth or maybe they find it really boring or, did, you know, so, so just do yourself a favor and don't ask if you really don't want to know. If you actually care, just be ready to listen and respond and, um, yeah, know that I would do the same thing to, to you if you needed someone to listen. And I think that works. that's what makes a good friend, um, to listen and to respond and to be there for each other and just try to offer support instead of always having the answers ready. And if you're actually just uh, with a person um, that has chronic illness and you're actually um, in a conversation about this and you're kind of just really not sure on what to say, how to say, to say the right things and you're afraid of saying something that might hurt them or that you don't, you maybe don't really get this person or you don't get their life or um, their decisions or, you know, either um, ask yourself, is it any of my business? If it's not any of your business, um, remove yourself <laughs> from the conversation. Um, but if it is, if you feel like you can be any help for this person, just tell them, help me try to understand you. Um, again, if you actually want the person with the chronic illness to explain things to you um, or enlighten you on the subject. So it's all about how much you really care. If you don't care, don't ask. If you care, be ready to listen. And in the time that we're in right now, with a lot of people struggling um, with maybe depression or just me mentally or financially or with their relationships or um, with sickness of any kind, um, just try to be supportive of each other and try to just be kind. That's so important these days and if you know someone sitting there alone in their house for some reason, um, give them a call. And if they don't pick up the phone, it doesn't have to be because they don't want to talk to you. It might be because it's a really bad day. <laughs> um, just try again and know that uh, it's really appreciated in most cases. That was probably a much longer video than I was supposed to make, but hopefully um, this made sense for you guys. Hopefully you learned something and um, comment down below if you are one of those persons or people um, that has asked some of these questions or if you have chronic illness and and you have experienced some um, ignorant comments that are just really either not nice or kind of hurtful or just plain stupid, uh, please share down below. I would love to hear. And yeah, I thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you 
in my next video. Bye.